the stunning band website in minutes with Bandzoogle. Go to Bandzoogle.com to start your free 30-day trial and use the promo code MUSICBIZWEEKLY to get 15% off the first year of any subscription. Everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Music Biz Weekly Podcast. I'm one of your two co-hosts, Michael Branvold, and as always, I'm joined by Jay Gilbert. How are we doing today, Jay? Great, Michael. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. So before we get rolling into a little discussion here, um, as always, want to show some love and thanks to Hypebot and Bands in Town. Thank you so much, guys, for everything you do to support and spread the word on the Music Biz Weekly podcast. And, of course, we've got a couple sponsors that I, I really want to make note of. Um, Bandzoogle, thank you so much. From Garage Bands to Grammy winners, Bandzoogle powers the websites for thousands of musicians around the world. A very simple step-by-step -step system will get you online in minutes. You and I can both attest to that. That's right. Choose from dozens of mobile-friendly templates. Customize your design and content in just a few clicks. Built for musicians by musicians, Bandzoogle has all the features you need for your website and EPK already built in including a merch and download store, a tour calendar with the ability to sell tickets, a mailing list offering to grow your fan list, integrations with all sorts of other content. Um, it's basically got everything a musician's going to need because it's built by musicians. Plans start at $8.29 a month, and that includes hosting and your own free custom domain name. Go to Banzoogle.com to start your 30-day free trial. And be sure to use the promo code MUSICBIZWEEKLY, all one word, and get 15% off your first year of any subscription. That's Banzoogle.com, promo code MUSICBIZWEEKLY to build your website and EPK today. And we want to show some love and thanks to Disc Makers. Disc Makers has come on board and, and is helping to support the Music Biz Weekly podcast. Of course, we all know it's a digital world, but don't forget the importance of physical media, especially things like vinyl. We all know that you want to sell some CDs at your shows, but don't ignore vinyl. Um, digital royalty, royalty payments, as we hear all the time, are so small, and selling products like CD, vinyl, T-shirts, at gigs has really become an important generator for income. Your margins on selling a CD are so much better than they are selling a digital download. Um, for every CD you sell at a gig, you might roughly need 3,000 streams to make the same amount of money. And that can be a lot of streams, depending on how big you are as an artist. Yep. Um, so our friends at Disc Makers are the place to go for discs. CDs, vinyl, other physical media, including USB drives and even T-shirts. We got a special offer for you. You can get free shipping on CD orders of 100 or more CDs from Disc Makers with the code FREEBIZ, all one word, up to $150 value. Hurry, the code ends 12-31-19. Head over to DiscMakers.com. Just put that code in when you check out. Yeah. So um, one of those last minute, we got to come up with a topic. And, you know, we always... Never a problem for ne us. Never a problem because we, <laughs> we are always talking about our own experiences. So I've got one that I'm going to throw out. And, you know, we've talked about in the past many times. Artists, you've got to be in control of your own career. You've got to be in control of everything. You've got to know. Well, I've got... Uh, a little story that just popped up this morning. A client, their old manager quit on them. Okay. Happens. We've all seen that happen. It wasn't the prettiest split. That also happens. Sometimes they split and leave mad and angry and you never hear from them again. And other times they try and jeopardize, torpedo your career all they can. Well, this... It's one of those cases where the ex-manager is trying to torpedo and harm the artist's career. Their last album from, I don't know, not quite a year ago maybe, was distributed through CD Baby. The manager created the CD Baby account, set up the distribution. The artist never got access to that account. 
red flag one, you want yeah. access to these so your distribution accounts. You need yes. to know. Yeah. Because because we we pretty much now knew they set it up and they were probably collecting all of the money. It was going right. straight to the manager. None of it was being accounted to to the artist. Right. Well, we started to work with CD Baby of like, how do we get access to this account? And I'm sure we've all been there where it's it's a lot of jumping through hoops, proving who you are, proving why you should get access to this. Well, we open up everything this morning and the account has been deleted. Now what? Now that's like, okay, CD Baby account's been deleted. Let's verify, but unfortunately I know what the, I'm going to see. The product yeah. is no longer on Spotify. It's no longer on iTunes. It's no longer on Apple Music. It's nowhere that you would have been able to buy a product because the distribution account has been deleted. So it's down. It's down. It's gone. It is gone. I mean, the the smart URL landing page I set up two weeks ago with all of the links doesn't work anymore. Now, great, thankfully, I can go in and change those URLs once we get the product re-released and redistributed. What a pain. But this is what's got to happen. We have to create a brand new CD Baby account. We have to track down master files and artwork and everything you need for an album release and we've got to re-release this out to the market again to all places so you have to re-enter it into their system all the all tracks and all isrc codes yep. and album image and all that metadata you got to start from scratch yep all gone all gone wow. start from scratch re-upload it now you know being the optimist that I am, okay, that does mean now we gain control of the account. We've created a new account. The artist is going to have access to it, and I'm going to make sure the payments are flowing to the artist the way, the way it, should, it be. should be, which is what we wanted to do, which would have taken probably weeks and weeks and weeks to do if CD Baby had been able to extricate the X manager from access and give us the access, but no. You know, the simple lesson here, people, is if you have access to your accounts, you know the username and password to your CD Baby, your TuneCore, whoever it is, and your manager is fired, is quits, whatever, you can go in there and do one simple thing to alleviate all future problems, change yep. the password. Once yeah. the password is changed, Nobody else can get access, and now you can go in there and look at, oh, who was the contact? Who were the email ad? What? Well, who was the email contact? Who was payment going to? What was there a PayPal account associated for deposits? You can change all that with no worry. Yeah. 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 Now, yeah, it's it, it it just goes back to we we talk yeah. about this so many times, Jay. About you've got to know. Who's got access to your social media? You've got to know who's got access to your web hosting, your domain hosting, yep. your distribution. So because if you don't, and, and, and I don't want to sound like a broken record, but we are to some extent here, it will come back and bite you in the ass. Yeah. And I've seen it time and time again from small yeah. artists to big artists. Oh, yeah. It happens across the board. And... You know, we've preached this for a while, and you even got ahead of this a little bit and still weren't able to turn it around. It's like a big ship. It's not going to turn yeah. really quickly. So we highly recommend, whether it's your your DIY distribution, whether it's your socials and YouTube and your website, whether it's, you know, Banzoogle or whatever you're using – you need to be in control of that stuff and that it's great to have a manager and hopefully that manager is going to have integrity and you'll have a long relationship together, but it's kind of like the old, uh, Ronald Reagan trust, but verify, yep. <laughs> you know, you, you want to make sure that you're on, sorry about the, the barking. That's we have okay. a, a new, new puppy. puppy who's going nuts right now. Um, you need to have, look, if you want to have your manager take care of this for you, you're busy, writing, touring, That's 100% fine. 
that's legit but you have to be involved in there too and you have to have that login information you, you, if, if nothing else you, you, have you, have to just, be you just say listen can you make sure we get distributed get set up wherever you think is best i don't care who you distribute through but when you set it up please send me the username and password yeah. and all i would suggest is make one attempt log in make sure you can get logged in that's and right. Save that username and password somewhere. I don't care if you write it on a sticky note and put it in a in in a folder somewhere that says right. CD Baby, TuneCore, Face, whatever it is. Just do that because yeah. when things change, you know. I and I think I told you I had another story related to um, a Facebook page. I had a client from I don't know about a year ago that I worked with for about three months. And I always sort of sit back when a campaign ends. I'm like, okay, let's just see how quickly they remove all of the people from accessing their social media yeah. when a campaign is done. Not that I'm going to go in there and do anything deliberately wrong, right, but this right. is the same what we've been talking about. you got to remove people who have access who no longer need that access. So right. a year later... And nobody year, does that. Nobody does that. A year later, my assistant's like... Hey, Mike, you know, this band, I'm still getting alerts. You know, do we need to still be admins on their page? I'm like, no, I was waiting to see if they were going to ever remove us, and they never did. And so go ahead and remove both of us from your from that yeah. page. So he goes in. He removes me. And then he's like, oh, Mike, you and I were the only admins on this band's page. I can't right. remove myself. No. I'm like, oh, Jesus. It down. He, go, he goes, None of the band members have any role on the Facebook page. They're not advertisers, editors, they're, they're Big red flag. moderators, they're not an admin, nothing. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. well, is there anybody on there who's got another role? He goes, yeah. I go, make that person an admin, delete yourself, not our problem to deal with. Right. And it's not just socials. I mean, we, we, that's definitely important. And, and I work with uh, one pretty well-known artist who's, he's got just a document on his computer and he has it backed up in the cloud that lists all of these things we're talking about and what the username and password is for all that stuff. Because let's face it, these things change and they evolve over time. And you want to sometimes, even if you don't have the correct password, they may say, well, send me a previous one so we can verify it. That can help. But what I've been noticing lately with the onset of Spotify for artists, Apple Music for artists, you go in there and you can add people to your team, but different release cycles sometimes have different teams, right? You, you and I may work one cycle on them, somebody else might work another. I went in there the other day looking at this uh, one artist, Spotify for artists, there was like 12 people listed there that could go in at any time and pull up any of that data. Now, is it bad? You know, can it harm them? No, probably not. But it is proprietary information. Same with your, I mean, with social, somebody could actually shut you down or post something they, some, some, inappropriate they, well, or anything. Listen, the same manager who deleted the um, CD Baby account deleted this artist's band page on Facebook. Wow. They just Because they were the admin. They never gave the artist access to it. So when the relationship ended, they went in and clicked that little button buried deep in the admin that says Del delete account. Yeah. It's gone. And I've learned there's Facebook can't even get it back. Once it's gone, it's gone. Wow. I thought there was a time period that I they send you. I thought there used to be, but Like yeah. maybe it's when you shut down your, if it's your personal page, because I know there's one where they give you X amount of time. I'm, I'm going to guess it's like 60 days or 90 days or something for you to change your mind and then they'll flip it back. But maybe not on these, you know, what they call like the business page. Right. I don't know. Uh, it, it, it's just, you're, you know, you're right. Probably 98% of the time you're never going to run into a problem. Yeah. But that 2% you got to protect yourself. is going to be an absolute pain in your ass because you're doing something right. as extreme as having to re-release an album, having to build a brand new Facebook page and relaunch that. 
Right. Um, you're having to spend weeks of back and forth with customer service trying to prove you own the account, but you don't have the password. And could you please reset the password for me and, and yeah. let me in? And that's it's a long not, process. It's a long you process. You just mentioned that, and I, I want people to understand that. You don't just make a phone call and it's taken care of. These platforms have so many users. And even when you're talking about CD Baby, which we're, we're fans of CD Baby, but they have so many artists and labels that there's not enough people on the planet to take care of you know, customer service right away on all of that stuff. So it takes a moment. And, and you know, what they're doing is actually a good thing. They're, they're, they're protecting you from what's called social engineering. You know, it's it's another way that 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 people steal access to accounts is they will call up a company and talk like they know everything. I'm I'm the new manager. I'm this. Oh, that's her name. This is where she lives because you can find a lot of information online and they're trying to talk the customer service rep into being really nice and helpful and giving them access to the account right now. I, I haven't seen that happen a lot in social media, but right. I know but the domain, point is it could. domain and web hosts are yeah. very, very protective about that type of yeah, stuff. As they should be. Somebody will try and talk their way into owning your domain and your account. So they're very protective about if you want to take control of something, you need to prove this, 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 and this, and show a picture right. ID on this. And you know that I I actually had to do that with um, was it GoDaddy where yeah I had to come up with well what would have the e- what was the email address that the, the domain would have been registered under and I'm like oh. well, so I know my ago, client's man. email and I know it right. wasn't hers <laughs> so I'm guessing it was this guy's email address mm-hmm. and if you can't come up with the right information they aren't going to change it. They no, that's why, yeah, it's so important to keep all this in one place and whatever, however you organize things that, you know, whether it's you use something like Slack or you use something, you know, uh, Google Docs or something just on your computer, I would recommend that, number one, you keep all of these logins in one place that you can get to. And, and number two, make sure you have a backup of it. But if you if you have that, then at least you have that email, that username. And like you just mentioned, you know, websites, it, let's say you're on uh, Banzoogle or Wix or Squarespace or whatever it is. If someone has that login information, not only can they mess with you, but they can shut it down. They can take it out. And yeah, you can eventually rebuild, but man, what a what a waste of time and energy and it, it makes so much sense to kind of plan ahead as though something like this could happen. It's just like having insurance for your car. You don't want to get into an accident, but you're preparing, you know, that you're you're safe and you're covered if something happens. Same with these online assets, you know, like you mentioned, websites, whether it's, you know, and logins to digital service providers and analytics and the socials. We could go on. There's so many different tools online, bands in town, <laughs> things like that. Yep. There are all sorts of things. Yeah, who's got who's got the access to upload tour dates to your bands in town account? Because yeah. or upload and delete is what it comes down to. In in most cases, if somebody's going to do something bad, they're probably going to delete something. They're not. Oh, I'm right. going to use this guy's bands in town account to promote my band because then right. it becomes an obvious who yeah. did it. If yeah. something is just deleted. The odds are you will you will probably know in your gut who did it, but there's not going to be actual proof because none of these services are going to release any sort of log file to say, well, oh. here's the IP address on this date and time right. of the person who logged in and hit the delete button. Right. Now, you're they talking, keep it. They do gather yeah. that, but they're not. you're yeah. not going to ever see it. No, I mean, unless it's like a murder inquiry or something. But, you know, we're talking about deleting accounts and the damage that could cause – but secondarily to that, think about what kind of damage somebody could cause if you have a, a breakup you know, with your manager. They can message through socials to your fans. They can message through bands in town. They can message through yep. the website, you know, uh, your, your uh, constant contact or MailChimp. I mean, now they've got the blowhorn, and they can say whatever they want. This is serious stuff. 
you know, um, it doesn't happen very often, but you really need to protect but, yourself. But again, it does happen. It so does don't, happen. Don't, don't cop the attitude of, uh, it happens to other people. It won't yeah. ever happen to <laughs> it me. It can't happen to me. Because My manager I, and I, I are good friends. I, I could bet you at some point in the near future of your career, something of some level is going to happen. You can't get into... GoDaddy for your domain and redirect it. You can't get into the web server to upgrade something. Um, you can't get into your distribution outlet, your platform to see right. where payments are going to verify something. Eventually something is going to happen. And and you're right, Jay, it's just keep a list of usernames and passwords. You could get as fancy as I would totally recommend I use a program on my Mac and my iPad and iPhone called LastPass. Yep, you turned me on to that. Um, it's a password vault. It remembers all of your passwords. It generates 50 character long, impossible to break passwords. Yeah. It's also got a little like file cabinet area where you can just password protect and secure copy. Like yeah. if you want to put in bank routing numbers or anything like yeah. that, that you need occasionally but yeah just don't want it as a post-it note you can do that now if, if if that's too much for you just open up a google doc spreadsheet and just yeah. create a spreadsheet of all of your passwords yeah now in that case you do have to make sure who's got access to that <laughs> exactly you know exactly have you shared it with somebody because you can share them, and that's great. Maybe you share it with the other band members so everybody's got the access. Band member leaves. You better remove that person from having yeah. access to your passwords. That's yeah. Somebody that's has right. the admin access to the, the, the Google Doc account. Well, they could delete the whole thing. They could delete the yeah. whole spreadsheet on you. So I think that that's smart. Mind. Yeah, there's another tool that I use. I, I use that, and then for one client, since they have so many passwords, I mean, you know, for everything, there's probably a hundred different passwords for things. I use a program called Password Pad Lite, and there's other programs like this. You know, um, they're not a sponsor or anything like that. It's just one that I've been using for a few years. But basically, those types of programs, which you can find online, they they make it so you have to type in a password to open the document. And you can actually do that with Word and uh, I think Apple's, uh, um, not Numbers, what's the other one that they have? Um, pages. Pages. Yeah, so there are, there are other programs where you can password protect a document. Now, of course, you have to make sure you don't forget that password <laughs> because right. they're not going to open it up for you. But to your point, having a, a Google Doc, maybe it's just one that you don't let anybody have access to that just you have. Because remember, if somebody has access to it, they can just copy and paste and take it, right? Yeah, I mean, here's here's if you are the, quote, the leader, the founder of the band, you need everything. It's up to you to decide, does the drummer get it? Because the drummer just started two months ago. You know, um, you know, is this per this fan who's a big help of yours, do they need, you need to decide that. But you, whoever is the leader, the founder, who's in charge of the business, you've got to have access to all of this stuff. Um, Could do it today. You know, I'm, I am, <laughs> you know, the lesson is I am now going to be spending the next week getting a, a album re-released that was out a year ago so we can get it back out into Spotify and Apple Music so the fans are like, where to go? Where to go? Well, you know, hey, full transparency, the ex-manager screwed the screwed her over and we're going to get it back out there for you. But you don't want to do that. No. You know, that, that that happening at the wrong time could derail an entire release. Imagine if this happened when the album was originally being scheduled to be released. Yeah. A week out from release date, and you they had deleted marketing it. Set up right, yep. and you, and not only marketing, but you may have had a a publicist or somebody for sync light. I mean, you have all these things set up in a release cycle, and if you disrupt that cycle. You, you know, you screw a lot of things. You screw the potential sales, 
but also it messes with the fans and you know it can it can really mess up your plans yeah and 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 keep in mind the 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 one of the downsides of something like this is a year ago if somebody and they we did we had people who reviewed the album and stuff like that and they put a link in the review that says click here to buy uh, yeah yeah well, you know what? That good. that link no longer works. You end up yeah. with this artist is no longer found on this page. Yeah. Not good. So yeah. please make sure you've got control of all of your assets. So yeah. important. Right away. <laughs> right away. <laughs> no, seriously, to, to that, yes, today. Don't wait until next week. Today, start putting it together. Start gathering what you know. And then if you got to ask the bass player, what does he have access to and get the username and passwords, just tell people you're putting together a master list. Yeah. And that's then check them, make sure that they work. Well, that's the other, that is, that is, that's a good point because I get this all the time from clients who I start working with. I'm like, send me your passwords. And they're like, I think this is it. And I log in. I'm like, <laughs> no, nope, nope. that doesn't work anymore. But it, that's okay. At least you've got an older one and you can reset it and you're not starting from well, scratch. Well, but the problem there sure. a lot of times is, what email address did you use to create the account? Because that's yeah. the email address that's going to get the password reset sent to it. That's right. Oh, that was my old manager's email address. Oh, great. Right. So, so they're going to get the email. They're going to get the email saying reset the password. And if they want to be a dick, they'll reset the password to right. something they control. So yeah. test them all out. And if it doesn't work, fix it and clean it right away. And make sure you update it as as you're using services. I don't know about you, but lately I've been finding Instagram is changing pat is 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 logging out accounts and changing passwords frequently. Yeah. Like there it's like we have we have sensed that you have connected your account to a, a service that helps you find followers and therefore we've frozen your account until you right. reset the password. It's like right. No, we haven't done anything. There's no apps connected to this. But, okay, new password. Great. We're in again. Right. You know, in the last two months, we're six password resets into this one account. Yeah. And that's, it's not just that. It's, you know, socials, other things. I know with Nielsen Connect, for, you know, an example, went in there the other day just to use it. It's like you got you to gotta update your, not only your username, but your password. You got to do both. It's like my bank, you yeah. know, it's like. Okay, so then you got to do that. But if you have to do that, let's say I'm guessing it's every six months, a couple years down the road, which one is it? You need to keep that thing updated, yeah, right? Spe especially if somebody else is updating the passwords, they got to come back then. and tell you. You change especially the password, then. let me know. Yeah. Um, so, yes, there you go, people. Please, please <laughs> yeah. start building a list of all of your accounts. You'll thank you us have. later. I swear, yes, I swear to God, you will thank us later. You will be going, that was a close call. I almost lost everything, but I've got access to it. Because, again, yeah. I'm going to be spending the next week or so relaunching an album because the entire CD Baby account was yeah, not good. No. All right, there you go. Right. Music Biz Weekly Podcast. As always, we would love it if you'd head over to iTunes and leave us a rating and a review. And if you're on YouTube, click that subscribe button. It would mean Please. a lot to us. And once again, thank you so much to our sponsors and our supporters. Hypebot.com, bandsintown.com, bandzoogle.com, and discmakers.com. Yep. Yep. You mean a lot to us. Thank you so much.